I don't know about you guys, but Joy-Con drift has been the bane of our Switch's existence. There has been way too many times where we've had to drop the $120 to replace them before finally taking matters into our own hands and learning how to fix them ourselves, which just seems a bit dramatic and unnecessary. It's also undeniable that the Nintendo Joy-Cons aren't the most ergonomic product on the market. They're too small for a lot of people to hold comfortably, like myself, and their flat design cuts off the circulation in your fingers, meaning you'll have to stop gaming until your fingers actually feel like they're attached to your body again. But thankfully we aren't the only ones who feel this way and there are many companies creating their own version of the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con that address their biggest issues. So we've tested and rated several of these third-party Joy-Con and Pro Controller alternatives to help you break up with drift for good. And as an added bonus, they're all a lot cheaper than their Nintendo counterparts. Surprise, surprise. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. They really help out our channel a lot. And without further ado, let's get into our favorite third-party Nintendo Switch controller options. First up, we have these Joy-Cons from Funlab. They have a rounded back that fits in the palm of your hand far nicer than Nintendo's own Joy-Cons. They're also about a centimeter wider, giving you more space between the buttons and allowing them to fit much better for people with larger paws. They're also pretty easy on the eyes, featuring these soft pastel color schemes and these smart looking white buttons. This is a nice change of pace from the usual bright in-your-face color schemes offered by Nintendo's own Joy-Cons. They do also come in the pastel blue and green color scheme of the Animal Crossing Joy-Cons, so if you missed out on those, then these are a good compensation. Those ones and the pink ones you see here are the only color options available though, so if you're not a fan of pastels, then you might find yourself gravitating towards some of the other options on this list. If you love a good D-pad, then you definitely won't be missing out here. The buttons also have a nice click to them, allowing for responsive and satisfying gameplay. The button mapping is also exactly the same as the Nintendo Joy-Cons, except that you can't actually turn these controllers on with the click of any button. You've got to hold down the home and capture buttons, this is important to note as I thought they were just broken the first time I used them. The controllers themselves are quite light, so when you're playing them on your Switch, they don't add a lot of heft. But when you do want to play them disconnected, they come with a weighted connector, which makes it feel like you're playing a real controller. The connector also has a large gap in the middle that you can wrap your fingers right around, and it's actually a really comfortable way to play. Another nice feature of these Joy-Cons is that they charge while they're attached to your Switch. However, once you've used your 8 to 10 hours worth of battery life when they're disconnected, you're able to charge them separately using a USB-C cable that comes included with your purchase. This is a really nice feature as you don't have to wait for your Switch to charge all of your Joy-Cons separately, you can just do them on their own. Part of the reason why Joy-Cons have such a high price tag is because they are full of high-tech technology. And one of the cons of getting a third-party controller is that you quite often miss out on some of these features. This case is no exception, as you are unable to wake up the console from sleep and there's no NFC support here, meaning that you can't use Amiibos with these controllers. One of the strangest things about these controllers' missing features is the lack of an infrared sensor. While this isn't exactly uncommon in itself, in fact, none of these controllers have an infrared sensor, Fun Labs still chose to include a piece of plastic where the sensor would be, even though it's completely useless. This is a bit of a strange choice, but I mean, hey, it's there, it, it looks nice, I guess. <laughs> there are a lot of features that these controllers do have though. They have motion controls and a great rumble, so you won't be missing out there. The plastic that these are made out of is quite thin, so much so that you can actually see the lights through it and they're pretty light, so they feel kind of cheap. But they're only 40 US dollars, so they are kind of cheap and we think that that'd be a great budget alternative. It is important to mention at the end here that when we first received these controllers, they didn't work. They were drifting in the upwards position and our Switch wouldn't even let us calibrate them. Two weeks on from that though, and they work perfectly and have worked perfectly ever since, but it didn't exactly instill us with a whole bunch of confidence. Let's move on to the Hori Split Pad Pro the only Joy-Con alternative on this list that's officially endorsed by Nintendo, giving the console a Pro Controller-like feel when playing in handheld mode. The buttons, grips, and analog sticks are all reminiscent of a Pro Controller, but don't add too much weight to the system. This means that the Split Pad Pro is easily the most comfortable Joy-Con alternative. They also come in a range of colors and designs inspired by popular video games such as Pokemon, Pac-Man, and Daemon X Machina. 
There's even a pair that features every gamer's favorite RGB lights. So no matter who you are, you will be able to find a Hori Split Pad Pro that resonates with you. Part of what makes a Pro Controller so fantastic is of course a D-pad. So Hori's done well by including one here. Apart from this D-pad, they also include two programmable buttons and two turbo buttons, which can be assigned to the input of your choice. The turbo buttons when activated spam a button of your choosing without needing your physical input. This can be helpful in games like Shooters or Monster Hunter Rise when you want to continuously attack. The programmable buttons are also handy because you can essentially assign a button from elsewhere on the controller to a more easily accessible position. All of these buttons are extremely responsive and the enlarged analog sticks offer a wide range of motion which in turn offers a great gaming experience when in handheld mode. This leads us to the Split Pad Pro's biggest weakness. You can only use these when they're attached to your Switch in handheld mode. Since the Split Pad Pro emulates a Pro Controller so well, it would have been amazing to have the opportunity to use it as such. It just seems like such a weird decision since the beauty of the Joy-Cons is that they are detachable. But Hori's original intended purpose was to bring the Pro Controller experience to handheld mode and they did do that well. Just like anything in life, you can't have it all, so there are quite a few features missing here. Quite a lot of features actually. There's no rumble, there's no motion controls, and there's no NFC Amiibo support. Also, because you can't detach the Horries from the console, they don't wake it up from sleep because you can just use the power button that's right there. The Hori Split Pad Pro is missing a lot of features, but the comfort and design mostly make up for these shortcomings. And at 60 US dollars or 50 if you choose a plain design, they come in much cheaper than first party Joy-Cons. Last but certainly not least in the way of third-party Joy-Cons are the Tom Nook Tanuki Cons from Stoga Game. Keeping with the themes of built-in grips, these fit snugly into the palm of your hands and are extremely comfortable to use, comparable even to the Satisfy Grip. The buttons and even the triggers are a little smaller than all of the other options on this list, so they might be a little bit uncomfortable and awkward to use for people with large hands. Know what they say about large hands, eh? Large gloves. Big gloves. They are definitely the cutest controllers in our collection though, and anything Tom Nook themed will always get my vote. But I do see how the design could get in the way as Tom had some trouble with the ears on the left and right triggers, and sometimes the small buttons do result in some incorrect input. But if your hands are on the smaller side, you might not share these issues and the controllers might work great for you. The D-pad is once again a welcome addition, as are the two programmable buttons on the back, and the turbo functions. These puppies also have quite the substantial battery life, coming in at between 15 and 20 hours. Once you've exhausted this, these guys are once again able to be charged using a USB-C cable separately. However, this isn't a necessity as they can be charged when they're attached to your Switch, which is an essential feature in our minds. Upon purchase of these Joy-Cons, you're supplied with a USB-C cord for the separate charging and a connector for when your Switch is in the dock. It's definitely among one of the strangest connectors we've ever seen, but the angle that the controllers sit at provides a comfortable gaming experience, and there's even this little game compartment in the centre of the console, which is a cute and handy addition. These Joy-Cons feature a six-axis somatosensory system for sensitive and responsive motion controls. The rumble is also by far the most powerful of any of the controllers we've tested. It has four levels of intensity, which are all completely adjustable. Which is a good thing and a necessity as Laura often has to turn them down in the mornings when I'm still asleep so she doesn't wake me up. These are my favourite Joy-Cons out of the bunch and the ones that I gravitate towards the most. But I can still admit that there are some shortcomings here. The buttons and the D-pad especially have more of a mushy feel rather than a defined click which sometimes results in them not being the most sensitive. This is fine for the most part, but there could be some games that require fast and coherent input where you might notice this more. There is also no wake from sleep or NFC amiibo support here, but for just 44 US dollars, you can't really go wrong. These Joy-Cons are super comfortable to hold and we personally love the design. If you love the idea of your controller looking like Tom Nook's face, but you're not in the market for Joy-Cons, then you're in luck. 
Stogo also offers a wireless Pro Controller version of the Nook Joypad. The wireless Nook Pro Controller is a fair bit smaller than the official Nintendo one. This could either be a hindrance or a benefit depending on the size of your hands. For me, it's pretty difficult to use. When I was in the market for this, originally I got it hoping that it would be more comfortable for me to hold than the real Pro Controller because of its smaller size. I believe this is true for the most part as I feel like my range of motion is improved because there's less distance between my thumb and the analog stick, but the buttons are also significantly smaller and could definitely have benefited from being a bit more spaced out to prevent any incorrect input. Sometimes when I try to push X, I also push A, and it's the main thing holding this controller back for me. This controller is definitely not just a pretty face though, and comes with a nice set of built-in functions. Apart from the headphone jack, which would be extremely useful if the Switch actually supported voice chat, hint hint, nudge nudge Nintendo, this controller also comes equipped with rumble, motion controls, and has a wake from sleep function, making this controller one of the most well-versed on this list. This controller is the Pro Controller version of the Nook Joypad and as a result does share some of the same shortcomings, mainly being the heavy or mushy buttons leading to a lack of responsiveness in the controller's input. But it does have a pretty decent battery life of 8 hours and for $34 US dollars it's a great alternative to the Pro Controller. Nintendo has had such a long and successful life in the video game industry. And it's super interesting to see how much things have changed since the early days of the SNES and Nintendo 64 that many of us grew up with. So when a company like 8-Bit Do can bring this nostalgia back into the present day with the form of their retro-inspired controller, the SN30 Pro, we were instantly intrigued. Without any grips, this doesn't look like the most comfortable controller ever, but it perfectly emulates the shape and feel of the old-school SNES controller that everybody knows and loves. And just like old times, it's actually perfectly comfortable for long gaming sessions, especially with the modern day advantage of not having to be cross-legged in front of your mum's TV, thanks to the wireless Bluetooth technology. Your nostalgia isn't just limited to your Switch here either, as this controller can be connected to anything via Bluetooth, even your phone if you're that way inclined. It also features button mapping, allowing you to change the layout of any of your buttons, meaning this is perfectly suited to cross-platform use. This one also has a pretty good set of functions including motion, rumble, turbo and button mapping as well as a really substantial battery life of 18 hours. But like most third party controllers it does lack NFC amiibo support and a wake from sleep function. The responsiveness of the SN30 Pro and the retro aesthetic could easily be enough to make up for this small lack of features. And at $55 US dollars, it's still far cheaper than a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Technology has come a long way since the days of the SNES, however, so it's definitely possible to find a more ergonomic controller on the market. 8-Bit do actually do one of these, but nostalgia is the best, so we chose to get this one instead. The last controller on this list is actually identical to the Nintendo Pro Controller in terms of size, shape and comfort, making the RGB Afterglow controller the most comfortable on this list. It's also actually licensed by Nintendo, so you know if you like the ergonomics of the Pro Controller then you're gonna like this one too. Upon first glance, the only blaringly obvious differences are the case and the RGB lights. These lights are fully customizable with a wide variety of colours and modes. This is easy to achieve through its own dedicated program button. Our favourite mode is the one where the lights change depending on what direction the joysticks are facing in. This is the most interactive one, but apart from this you've also got a solid colour option, a breathe option, and an option where the controller rotates throughout all of its colours. We affectionately refer to this one as the rainbow option, perfect for rainbow road. This is definitely the coolest controller in our opinion, and the best in terms of usability. The sensitivity and the motion on this is spot on and it really does feel like you're using a Pro Controller. The two programmable buttons on the back also seem to be the best in terms of quality that we've tried so far and the easiest to program. The RGB Pro Controller costs 50 US dollars and features motion, a wake from sleep function and a hefty 40 hours worth of battery life. This is obviously heavily affected by the brightness and settings of your lights. 
This is our favorite alternative to the Pro Controller, and up until the making of this video, we thought it had it all, until we found out how many functions it really didn't have, mainly Rumble. None of our other options had NFC Amiibo support, so that's understandable, but we do feel like Rumble is a pretty decent loss since it really helps you become immersed in the game you're playing. So there you have it, six of our favourite Nintendo Switch controller alternatives. We'll be sure to leave links to them all in the description below. But what's the most important aspect of a controller for you? Are you willing to sacrifice a bit of functionality for some aesthetics or comfort? Or do you value features above all else? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Whether you're tired of Joy-Con drift or you're just looking for some new pro controllers to play games with your mates, we hope that you can find something here that's a bit easier on the wallet. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and we'll see you next time.